Well, hello everyone, and thank you for joining us again for another episode of Leading on Mondays. My name is Flori Lungo, and I'm so delighted to be with you today. And today I'm joined, as usual, by my teaching partner, Madalina Ginescu. Welcome, Madalina. Hey, everybody. Hey, Florin. Nice to be here again with you. Absolutely. Thank you for joining us. So why don't you introduce us to the topic that we're going to discuss today? Well, it's gla I'm, I'm glad to do that. Uh, first of all, we are starting a new series and we are going to discuss about the five dysfunctions of a team. And we are going to start with the lack of trust at work, especially. And uh, for you as leaders uh, looking at us, hearing us, uh, how to deal with it, how to find out what are the signs of lack of trust at your uh, uh, environment, work environment, and what can you do? to actually improve the trust among your people, among your member, members. So what I would like to discuss with you, first of all, is what is actually trust? What, what do you think, Florin, is the definition from your point of view of trust? Well, for me is that I, um, well, I'm, I can open up to someone. Like, uh, I would not share things that are important to me with someone that I do not trust because I don't know if maybe those things will be used against me or they will be used, you know, they will be shared with other people and I don't want those people to know. So for me, it would be someone that I trust would be a person that I actually uh, share personal details with, uh, someone that I know they will be there when they promise something that they deliver. They will be delivered. They will be there. Um, someone that, um, again, in the Nordic countries here in Denmark and Sweden, uh, like you, you, you. I mean, many of my con, many, most of my clients, we don't have a contract in place, a formal contract in place. So in other words, we trust each other that if I say I'm going to deliver this, you know, I'm going to deliver. And, and if they say I'm going to pay you for that, they're going to pay me, right? Uh, and so, again, many times I meet people and we don't even have an invite in our calendars and say I'll be there at 2 o'clock on Tuesday. And mm -hmm. in the beginning, when I came from Romania, I was not sure, okay, should I, you know, should I trust them? Would they be there? But I, because I was the, at the beginning on trying to build my network, I was there all the time. And I got surprised that people were just showing up at the time they said and a few minutes early, you know, every single time. And if someone didn't show up, well, they had a they text message means, hey, Florian, something happened. But uh, that was something new to me, right? That kind of trust that you just say something to someone. And, and, I, and I realized that um, this is kind of uh, the, the kind of trust that people people give you. If you say I'm going to deliver something, you're going to deliver. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I'm not going to go longer than that because I also have uh, examples from you know um, maybe the effects of that on the other side. But yeah, that that would be for me a definition of trust. That that's how we define it. If I think about trust. So we identify from your definition, we identify multiple things. And this is what I want to emphasize in this uh, trust definition. First of all, trust is between two people. Yes, at least two people. But it's like a, a, a bi bidirectional way. It's between me and you, me and somebody else. And it's also related to the willingness of somebody to be open in front of other per person. And also related to that is the, as you said, is the presumption that the other person will uh, think of my benefit in this case. So if I'm vulnerable, vulnerable enough, if I'm opening up to somebody else, I presume that the other person will trust and will respect my vulnerability and will act in my benefit because this is how I share, this is what I shared with the other person. So it's a relation like this one. And um, if we, if we also, when you also said, you, you, you said something else that we can add to this trust definition. You said that what you did, because you respected your word, the other person is respecting their words. Sure. Yes. Yeah. 
and it's about okay i am an, an honest person i'm an integer and this is how i act around you and in this case uh, is you are willing to act the same way with me to respect yes. your word to respect me to be honest to be integer well of course there are some exceptions that we can think of not not many people will act the same way as we act but this is like i said an exception but usually the trust is like this and i can be vulnerable in front of you and let's now think a little bit about what is actually the absence of trust because we talked about the definition of trust what yeah. what should be in place for people to trust each other and what is not in place for people to lack trust among each other so what is your opinion florin in this case I think for me, it's at least honesty, right? So if I'm not, uh, well, first of all, I think it comes back to having that psychological safety. So I know this is kind of a buzzword, but it's needed in any kind of relationship, right? If you don't don't feel safe, right, to share things that, you know, maybe are that, you know, are not going to use against you, if you're not comfortable, right, if you it's, it's difficult to explain yeah. the lack of trust because I will say if you don't trust people, right? And you ask me, for what does it mean not to trust people? But but yeah. I think let, let, let's think know, about that for a, for a moment. Yeah. Yeah. So let's, so for me, I, I think we'll, yeah. For me, I think I will start with with that kind of psychological safety, right? And that could have different forms depending if it's a more of a personal relationship or at work, but it, it's people are not really honest with each other. And in a way that if, if I don't trust you, then uh, I, I maybe sometimes use my own agenda. Like if I would want my project to go first, or if I want my, you know, my work to be easier and, and I, might, I might avoid taking responsibility for some work and, and just pass it on to someone else. So instead of me being honest that maybe I made a mistake or, or, I think honesty, like lack of people will not be honest. People will not be vulnerable. People will not be open. And 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 partially because of that lack of psychological safety, knowing that you know this is a safe environment for us to share. This is a safe environment for us to to uh, you know if I'm here sharing that I go to a personal struggle, it's not gonna be used against me. I'm gonna have the support of my team. The support of my manager to navigate that. Yeah, I see countless testimonials now on LinkedIn of people thanking their companies because they stepped up and they helped the individual going through uh, a, a personal challenge. I see countless of that. You don't see those where you say, well, my employee didn't support me. Maybe those are not so vocal. You don't see those, but you definitely see those uh, when when someone gives an unsolicited you know testimonial about how the company treated them when they need it so for me that's trust right they trust their employer and the employer use that trust you know for good the absence of it will be where the person doesn't even dare to share why they need maybe to take some time off or why why they cannot work on this project or why and and not sharing right that that's for me the absence of trust what do you think wow. Yes, actually, you uh, you mentioned already so many things that I would like to share with you. Um, first of all, we need to remember exactly as you said, people don't open up. People keep to themselves their opinions and concerns, they even mis their mistakes, even their mistakes, because when you are in a unsafety environment, if you're making a mistake and you know that it might be bad for you, you have this willingness, this not willingness, you have this trigger to share what you, you did and you try to cover your mistake. And uh, you also, um, as you mentioned, um, people won't be as vocal as they would like to be or as in a safety environment. They don't want to express themselves as much. Also, they are unwilling to cooperate because mm -hmm. they don't, uh, trust each other enough to uh, to base 
themselves on the other person's skills or accomplishment or success. They just don't want to trust that. They just don't want to uh, be part of that. Uh, also, I remember in uh, the lack of uh, trust is a lot, a lot, a lot of lack of information. Mm. Because if people tend to to be silent and to keep for themselves, guess what? The information will be restricted for many people in the team. And guess what happens when there is a lack of information in a team? People will start to jump to conclusions or to fill the gaps. And maybe the they're filling the gaps. It's more like a story, an unreal story related to the reality action to the actual reality because they are making up stories it's just the conclusion they think based on the lack of information that they have and also i remember that when we think about this lack of trust or absence of trust i also noted there is a lot of uh, waste of time and energy to keep things the same if they were before yeah. They don't want to uh, start new things. They don't want to be involved in new projects. They want to keep the things the way they were. They don't even. They, they usually don't like change. Why should I bother? Why should I struggle for what? It's not in my own benefit. It's just for the company's benefit, and I don't like that. What about there is much, and also in the lack of trust environment, I also so people that they don't want to they are not willing enough to spend time with each other if you can relate to that if you know yeah. uh, if you have an example in your life not only in personal and not only in the business part but also i uh, relate to the personal lives when we think about our friends do you want to go out with the person that you don't trust why why would you do that? So these are some of the things to actually identify in your work environment. What are the uh, what are sorry? What are the signs of lack of trust in your work environment? And um, if you if you have, do you have Florin? Actually, do you have any example related to that? Could could you see the lack of trust in any of your uh, best experiences? Yeah, I think. Um... To be honest, I was I, I knew about Lencioni's work on these five dysfunctions, right? But I didn't really took the time to go deep and understand kind of what he's talking about and really study his material. Uh, and um, now looking back at some of the clients that I work with, I can clearly see that uh, that lack of trust. I can clearly see, for example, we were doing a, a team activity with with a team. And um, there was an uncomfortable question. And when we asked that uncomfortable question, what happens is that, unfortunately, the leader stepped up and pointed at someone. Okay, you should answer this. The reason why he did that is because he was uncomfortable about maybe learning that the team didn't know the answer or the team shared something that he was not willing to hear or ready to hear. So he pointed towards someone that he trusted, right? But what that said, mm -hmm. it said to me now, looking back, it was a lack of trust among team members and among team members and the leader. And I'm very clearly, if the leader would have trusted the team, right? And would have been ready and willing to actually understand and really see where the team is, he would have been comfortable in letting the team discuss that question rather than pointing someone that he trusted, right? So this was subtle, right? And, and, and sometimes, you know, gets unnoticed, but it speaks volumes to people. Like people say, why would I even get involved in this if, you know, he's going to point someone that he trusts? He doesn't really want to listen to us, right? So, so that's one of the consequences of lack of trust. People do not open up. People do not speak up. And if they don't speak up, they don't feel that they have been listened to. Right? Yeah. If they try to, let's say at the beginning, when you are in an environment and you are not sure if this is the lack of trust environment or not, people tend to speak up their minds to say, 
to say something. But when they realize over and over and over again, they are not listened to and everything goes just by them and other people will uh, uh, pull the, uh, well, will pull the strings and everybody's, every, everybody should apply to that. Then again, this can create a lack of trust in time. Absolutely. So maybe at the moment, your team, you leaders, um, and this is where, who I'm referring to. So maybe in your teams now, uh, the trust is there, but don't take it for granted. Because no. if you are not willing to do everything you can or to uh, maintain this trust environment, then the trust will disappear eventually. Because uh -huh. if... You remember the example with the metaphor with one bad apple ruins uh, a, a lot of goods. That yeah. spoils a lot of good apples. Why? Because it's only one and influences a lot of other good apples. So that can be the case in your, in, in your example, in your team. Maybe you have one person who poisons the team, yeah. right? So this is also a lack of... Uh, an absence of trust, and it might be another dysfunction that we can discuss later related to what Lencion is, is saying in the pyramid with the five dysfunctions of a team. So we need to pay attention to also to this, to this kind of examples. What will, where will it lead me on the long term? This kind of behavior that I'm having now in my, my team, where will it, will it lead? Will it lead to another lack of uh, something or will, will it lead to a dysfunction, another dysfunction in my team, or will it lead to uh, something good or not? We, we need to we need to pay attention to that one. Uh, absolutely, trust is uh, it's not something you get and you and you hold it because uh, every single day by the the actions and and maybe the things you do and the things you don't do and the things you say and the things you don't say and and your behavior actually reinforce that trust. Or you diminish that trust with your team by every single action yeah. you you take, and so and and it's not only you as a leader. Like definitely, people have to trust you as a leader, but also then they have to trust each other. Because it's not necessarily yeah. like you as a leader you could build the trust um, with with each individual, but also you know teams should have trust in each other because at the end of the day they cannot just come to you like two to you young adults or you two teenagers and 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 you to be the mediator between some you know stupid yeah. <laughs> stupid discussions right that that's not your role but that's happening when when you know when the teams do not do not trust each other and also in meetings you see this in meetings there was a lot of of agendas right so someone would want to move on their project compared to the other person's project so they will they will actually influence and they will play politics, right, in meetings. And and even though, let's say, the other person's project might be even better for the company, but they still want to pass on their project because, you know, for, for their personal benefit, from for their career benefit, for different reasons. And and this this also happens. Like people, instead of... Mm -hmm. if, if there is a moment when you as a leader feel that, and, and I've been in this situation, if, if there is a moment when you feel that you have to be careful what you say and, and pay more attention to the dynamics and what you say so you don't step on people's toes, that's consuming your time. Mm -hmm. That's a sign of lack of trust. So if you're thinking like, how should I deliver this to Madalena so she doesn't take this personally and fights with uh, Gabriel or in the meeting, then that's a problem because instead of you and everyone focusing on the goal you're focusing on how not to hurt feelings mm -hmm. and when you do that those mm -hmm. people and those relationships what are called a high maintenance relationships where it requires a lot of maintenance a lot of time and, and, and input from your side to maintain those right and so at the end of the day mm -hmm. it, it is not going to be worth it. it it will hurt everyone it will hurt the productivity and everyone and those that you know that really see it and and you know let's say people see it like you think they have not noticed but they see what happens in the room so if, if they see it and you don't do anything about it we talk about feedback last last uh, episode and and if you think about feedback, you not doing anything it's still feedback to your team 
that you're tolerating this kind of behavior. So again, people, instead of opening up, they will close even more. Okay, I think I lost the connection a little bit. Uh, yeah, I think now we are good. Uh, good. Yeah. So uh, let's uh, get uh, to the next point because this is the most important topic. <laughs> how to gain trust in, uh, in a team? How can we increase trust in a team? And I will just start with one thing and then I will invite you Florin to, to share with your, your experience with us. Uh, in the leadership game that you see behind me, there is one special card that I love to play during, uh, during team events, which is, uh, is a question related to a person in a team, everybody in a team. Are you transparent enough that your people can come to you, that people around you can come to you and share with you only also the negative parts? Or are you building or keeping a wall in front of you to keep people away? So this is a very, very, very powerful question because then not you for not for the leader, also for the members of the team, they need to look at themselves and see if they are trying to to build on this trust among the team or not. So what uh, are some solutions that you suggest, Florin, for leaders to actually increase trust among their teams? Uh, that, your example is a really good one. And, and also what I have found is that leaders would set the standard and, and kind of set the stage for the interaction between team members. Mm -hmm. So in other words, if playing that card in that game or in any other situation, if the leader is not going to be honest and vulnerable in answering that question, that will set the tone for how the other members are going to answer that question. Yeah. Right? So, so well, I've done exercises in the past where we, we just asked the leaders not to be part of the exercise because we know people were going to up, open up more. But we also knew that the leaders not being part of the exercise, they will not really see, right, and get the, you know, first-hand feedback from the team. So when I've done this, it, it, there, is, it, there is a balance. Um, sometimes, unfortunately, sometimes it happens that we are called in to work with teams and the leader doesn't want to be part of that because they feel that, oh, you need to fix my team. I don't have a problem. My team has a problem. And, and definitely yeah. when the, the, the leader is not part of the experience, then we're not going to have the, the results that, that we want to have. So, so this kind of team uh, experiences help a lot. Uh, questions like that. Other questions or, or other, mm -hmm. other ways we, we help teams is, for example, through personality assessment. Like taking an assessment with one of our Maxwell leadership assessments and then openly sharing, oh, this is what the assessment says, you know, that I am too fast paced. And sometimes you as my team, you might feel that I'm, I'm pushing you, right? And, and this is also one of my weaknesses, which I know and, I, and I'm working on, right? So you as, as leader being vulnerable in opening up in front of the team and say, hey, this this what the report says, it's really true. And this is really a challenge for me, right? And when I'm too fast, you know, I, I ask you to stop me and to remind me that I'm going too fast and then I lost you. And this is something that then will allow everyone else to open. So we do this all the time with teams. Like we take them to one of our assessments, then we create a group assessment and we look at, you know, how the, how the team tends to work together. And we look at what personality we have on the team and what kind of environment do they need and can we offer that kind of environment. And then when we look at individual differences, now knowing that Madalina tends to, to you know, communicate in a certain way and some of these things are important to her and she might be, for example, I'm not saying that this is your style, but I'm, I'm using your name as an example, right? So knowing that she might be sensitive to criticism, that allows me to adjust the way I communicate with her. So sharing about our, you know, the way we are wired and our personalities 
helps the team to gain trust in us, right? Sharing personal stories. Another exercise we take teams through is, is for them to share um, personal stories or personal histories or exercise where we have them share five or six things about them. Like, you know, the city they're born, how many siblings were in the family, what schools they went through, one of the best experiences of their life, maybe one of the worst experiences of their lives. So, so these things help us learn more about the person, right? And the person behind the kind of the mask that we, we put on when we are at work. So these things help. Um, another thing that we use with clients is 360 assessment, right? This is a tool that we have at Maxwell Leadership. And, and through the 360 assessment, a leader uh, or, or a middle manager really gets, you know, hands-on. Um, we say objective, but it's not always objective because it will be the opinion of their people, right? And their peers and the superior. So so might be some subjective feedback in there, but still, like, like people will help you see yourself realistically. And if you, if you as a leader, you're open to that, then of course that speaks about how much you trust the team, right? Um, and and uh, those are tools that, that we actually use. And, and this is how, this is how teams could actually bring, uh, build, build trust. But also like, like if you would be a leader, uh, what would you do? Like outside of, outside of um, hiring a consultant like us, what would be some things that the leader could do themselves, right? Okay, I think I'm back. All right. Maybe you didn't get my question, but I'm, I'm yeah. going to say it again. Internet is not as... I see. Okay. So, so Sorry, what I was also... Uh, my, internet is, my internet is messing with me today. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I can see that. So, so I was also going to, to ask about what leaders could do to build trust outside of getting help from a consultant or getting help from someone like us. Let me know if you got the question. Uh, no. Can you repeat, please? All right. So what would you do if you would be a leader to build trust outside of helping or getting help from a consultant or a trainer? So what can they do outside of that? Yeah, yeah. So we share about some things how we help, right, leaders. But what can they do, you know, before getting not necessarily before, but in parallel with getting help from from someone specialized consultant or trainer? Yeah, this is a good question because I had this uh, situation last week uh, when I was to, well as a consultant, I was talking to him about he was a, a team in uh, a leader in a team actually a general manager in a team and um we had this conversation how can i build trust among my 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 colleagues because i really care about them and i want to to help them and i want them to trust me but what any anything i do is just not enough and we need to we need to make it straight from the beginning building trust uh takes time it's not just like that. Now I'm doing something for you, and then you, and then you build up trust with me, and then you are trusting me. Uh, when we when we think about trust, just think about how you create relationships in your life with very very good friends in your life. How did you do it? How did you end up to be such a good friend with that person? What did you do? What did they do? And in, in uh, this is actually a very powerful question that can answer to your question. Because, okay, we, you can, you can has, ask for help from somebody like us, from a consultant, somebody who is specialized in this one, but what can you do outside of this? Just think about your personal relationships. How did you gain trust with each other? And what did you do? What did you personally do? And what did the other person do to gain trust? Um, because I can give you a lot of answers. I can give you, okay, you can do yeah. this, 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 and this. But if you don't relate to this topic, to your own life, it will be just information coming from one ear to the other ear, and that's it. 
you will lose it. Try to build it within yourself and see what is the answer for that question. And uh, just to help a little bit, what I, I'm doing outside of talking to somebody uh, as a consultant person, somebody with specialized in this one, um, I found out that the best relationships I have with, I had, I have already have, <laughs> uh, still having them with uh, important people in my life is when I needed help, even though I didn't want to ask them first because I didn't have the trust with them yet, they were there. They they showed me their hand, okay? They, let me help you. What can I do for you? Because the trust wasn't there yet. Just giving a hand to somebody. So when you see somebody down, just give them a hand and you never know how, how that will come at the end. So yeah, that can be a start. Be there when people need, no matter what. Yeah, that's so good. Well, don't yeah. do illegal stuff. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, but, but this is a really good, really good question, really good reflection, because each of us build trust differently. And, and just going back and look at some of the relationship in your life and see how you build that trust definitely helps to, to build that trust with your people. Because I think that's also a mistake many do. It say, well, you know, I cannot be the same person at work that I am at home. So, you know, and you should not get too close to your people, right, in, in the workplace. So saying that to a leader they might feel, oh, okay, so, so you know, I don't want to get close with my people or as close with my people as I am with my family or with my friends, right? So sometimes that could be a challenge, but, but the principle still applies, right? You know, the principle of trust applies, you know, similarly at work or in your personal life. So I think this was a really good start, and, and we're going to discuss next week the the, the next dysfunction, right? So let me just put this on the screen, see if I can put it on the screen, because these are the, the five dysfunctions, right, of, um, of a team. And, and we just discussed the, the as, as absence of trust, right, the lack of trust. So we're going we're gonna to go up this pyramid here, and we're going to look at fear of conflict, lack of commitment, avoidance of accountability, and, and inattention to results. So that's what we're going to do over the next four, four weeks. Yeah, sounds good. And just one one thing to add, every every bit of everything on top is built upon the base. So we built the foundation with the absence of trust. How can we build trust? And then on top of that is conflict. And then on top of that is commitment. And on top of that, the rest of them. So we need yeah. to pay attention to this one. We we built the foundation today, and then we are building upon what we built today. So the lack of trust is sorry. The fear of conflict actually comes and is very evident when it is based on the absence of trust. So we have absence of yeah. trust, and then there is a fear of conflict, and so on and so forth. So looking forward for our next meeting next Monday. Uh Absolutely. Um, same here. I'm looking forward to that. And um, I hope you got some value today and we look forward to be back with you next week. All right. Take care. Take care. See you soon. Bye-bye.